What's up guys? Welcome to Wasted Space. We're back in Space Engineers and welcome back to the runway we used on the stream the other night where we're testing out Drago's really cool aerodynamics mod. An old one, but so far from my experiences, a really good, really interesting one. But I did not feel we did it very much justice on that stream because we had very little experience with it. So we built a couple of fairly derpy aircraft that sort of worked. But that meant that on the stream last night, I wanted to mess around a bit further with the concept and with an idea in particular that I thought, okay, this is impractical, but it would be kind of cool to see if it's doable. And you guys are almost certainly starting to get the gist of what I'm talking about just by looking at this thing. But yeah, we're talking about something like White Knight 1 and Spaceship 1. Similar to what Virgin Galactic are trying to do, although the, those are the kind of older versions of what they're using. It's something where you have a carrier aircraft, and this is sort of the parasite aircraft approach. You have a carrier aircraft, and then you have the aircraft it's carrying. The one on top is just atmospheric thrusters, nothing on the bottom, purely using the aerodynamics to fly around. And then the one on the bottom has more thrusters because it's going to go to space, but all of the thrusters are ion. So without further ado, I can talk a bit more about it as we make our journey up to the stars. And it had a couple of features that really surprised me and I wasn't expecting to work quite like they did. So first things first, just going to launch ourselves off the end of the runway. This one flies a fair bit better, it's got a nice amount of lift and then I'm just going to lock the wheels. Always lock wheels when you're in the air, they behave so weirdly otherwise. And once we're lining up with our nice escape route out over these mountains here, I'm also going to activate the thruster overrides. This is just the rear thrusters, putting them all on override so that I can take my hands off the keyboard and look around and talk a bit. And there you go, dampers off as well. And that's a relatively important one for what's going to happen later on. Because this white craft ended up doing something that I didn't predict, didn't expect, but is really damn cool. So just looking at the design quickly, there's not a huge amount to it. Technically it is survival ready, it has all the bits it needs. They all run off batteries and reactors because there's no hydrogen involved. That's one of the major advantages with this is you don't have to have these huge aircraft which with this mod in particular mean that they're really hard to actually get to fly at all. It does have a couple of issues like you'll notice we're reporting in kilometers an hour, I need to get in here. You have to do quite a bit in the menu at the moment because this is more of a concept aircraft, even though it looks kind of complete, that's because it worked so much better than I was expecting that this one, or the black bit, has actually been to space twice, and the white bit's been landed twice as well. So these have proven themselves completely reusable. The weird thing about that is what I'm going to hopefully be able to demonstrate. How did the white bit land when there's only one of me? So what we're doing at the moment, you can sort of, there's not much else to the designs really. I, I just made them as light as possible while still being capable of the task. The wheels and how they're tucked underneath there, I was quite pleased with. This is the first time I've put wheels on an aircraft where they don't look ugly as all hell. But yeah, what we're waiting for now is to be about 5,000 meters up. And you'll notice our speed is actually dropping now. Our atmospheric thrusters are no longer producing anything like as much thrust. The little sort of cones out the back of them have got really small. And if you look down at our thruster override in the bar, that's got really small as well. So this thing's sort of at the edge of what it can do. The other thing it's a good idea to remember, and we're going to lean down a bit to get ourselves a bit more speed, is that that number there is the distance to the ground, not the distance to sea level. So at times that number is going to rise dramatically and fall dramatically just based off whether or not you're going over a mountain. So if I, we've got a mountain over there, if I turn to our right and go over this valley instead, we'll end up with a much better chance of actually achieving those sort of heights. So 4,500. I think I would prefer a little bit more. Go on, can we hit that 5,000? That would be perfect. That'll do. She's around 5,000. So now is going to be the really dodgy maneuver because as you guys have probably guessed, this would really be better off flown by two people. One in the top and one in the bottom. But that's also how I stumbled across the weirdest feature that I really didn't expect. So what I've got to do here, as I said, somewhat dodgy, is unlock this connector, get out, and then get into the ship behind in time. So here we go. Unlock, get out, run down, check pack on, dampers on, catch it, catch it. This is a really dodgy, dodgy maneuver, but hey, how else am I supposed to do it on my own? Go on, don't get the connector, get the cockpit, and there we go, cool, we're off. Now you'll notice again here, the thrust isn't as powerful as it could be. And again, because we've got wheels, it's showing in kilometers an hour. But now we're just going to catch up with and pass our carrier aircraft. 
Now, normally, you wouldn't need the drop to wait this long. You'd have someone else in here, they'd be ready to burn almost immediately. As soon as it's cleared that carrier aircraft, on go the thrusters and off you go. Just check the dampers are off as well, because we do almost all of our flying with these two with the dampers off, because they're relying completely on the aerodynamics. The dampers is almost a bit of a cheat. This is, even though this is a silly concept that's not very practical because there's no reason to do it in Space Engineers, somehow you also feel like you shouldn't be cheating. So, fly past our, our carrier, and as you can see, we're now happily accelerating our way up to space. And if I was to hit K, let's turn the control wheels off. We're going to get quite quickly. The higher we go, the more efficient these ions are becoming and eventually we're going to start reaching the max speed and I am running a speed mod on this because the aerodynamics mod just behaves so much better with a speed mod than it does without. Feels much more like you're actually gliding, like there's some control and like these speeds are more realistic and these days it seems like space engineers can kind of take it. But you, you guys get the idea now, we're clearly on our way up to space, our altitude's rising nice and quickly, our, we're still accelerating, nothing's going to get in the way now so rather than make you all sit through that Let's turn around and do the braking manoeuvre. So, bit of dampers, and we're not going to stop completely... Oh, well, we are going to stop completely because we need to accelerate back down again. What we're not going to do is accelerate up to full speed. And you can see, because of the speed mod, we've actually travelled quite a distance. So I'm going to go up to, say, about 200 metres a second. And the reason we're not going to go to full speed is because, of course, this aerodynamics mod also has drag and heat. So we don't want to burn ourselves back up in re-entry. And the re-entry point is about, about 7,000 meters where things start to get hot. Now that seems really broken and really weird, but unfortunately it's just, it's down to space engineers. The mod is based off, it's based off the air density. And in space engineers, there isn't any air until about 7,000 meters. That's how come atmospheric thrusters cut out around there is because there isn't any air now. But it does mean that it's a bit skewed, a bit imbalanced. Now we're coming, so we've gone through a lot of that hot zone, and as long as I keep our, keep ourselves not fighting too hard, we're going to be able to now get up to a much faster top speed, and we want to keep our height up a little bit to make sure that those ions don't run out of strength. If we get too low, we're just in glide mode almost. Now what I will probably do here is speed up this bit of footage so that you guys don't have to watch that bit, but it's a fairly simple flight back down towards the base. When we get near, I'll slow things back down again because the landing's kind of fun because again you're in this sort of this glide mode where you don't have as much thrust as you think you would because you're actually using ion thrusters but it seems so far to have been fairly reliable so at this point we're kind of about 9k out and we're basically on our approach path now i've dropped down quite a bit you can see the ion thrusters are barely having any effect now so you're getting to the point where it's very difficult to rely on those and what we need to do is start lining ourselves up with the runway itself so that we've got a nice flat trajectory coming in because you don't have that damper support. What you will notice, however, and it's, it's that misnomer again, that ion thrusters don't work when you're down here, that we still have enough thrust to actually make ourselves accelerate because of those big ones on the back. What we can't do is effectively take off or, because we won't gain speed quick enough to leave the ground basically, or do anything about side-to-side -side compensation. Those little thrusters would be useless. So it's all about banking and trying to keep our height right so that as we approach this runway, we're not dipping below it just at the worst time. So I think I actually need to line myself up a bit better, just feathering the thrust over and over and over again. You see these little bursts. We're coming in quite slow. We need to pull up a little bit, perhaps. And the wheels are still unlocked, uh, still locked, sorry. We're going to lock those up as soon as we get kind of quite close to the landing point and from this point of view I feel like you get a slightly better idea of where that landing point is it's a bit cheaty perhaps oh we're dropping speed too much you can always flare to do that just need to make sure you don't lose all the height stop that sideways movement not quite and in we come we'll unlock the wheels you see those drop down there and actually start having an effect on how the craft flies as well and touchdown. Not so bad. So on the stream, I, I managed to land that, and I was like, hell yeah, success, damn right. And I was like, I wonder what happened to the other bit. I wonder what happened to the bit that I had to leave because there's only one of me. So I went into Biggest Grids in Space Master, and I clicked Next, and I found this, still flying. So I was like, okay, uh, let's jump to it. 
as my guy, and let's go and bring this bit back as well. And what we'll find is it's about at, at about 8,000 meters, basically just sitting at an almost stall. And all we need to do now is get in it and bring it back around again. Now, of course, in reality, what you'd do is have someone else fly this, and you wouldn't need to go out and space master over it or whatever. But it surprised the hell out of me that it was actually just flying around the planet on its own. So again, I'm going to speed this bit up and I'll talk a little bit over it, because there's no way you want to watch me manually fly back 60 kilometers. but I will do so just to show you that this will now be the ship that's been up there three times and back. And I was blown away by the fact that this worked and it didn't explode. I almost got to the point, and I'll show you a little bit of this footage here as well, where I was able to dock without any help. I had um, my second PC running a Counter Space Engineers in the little black one. I had my main PC in the same game driving the white one, and I almost managed to go up to space and redock with this thing again in midair. The only problem was there's a point where I've got to go into the menus and lock the connectors and change some of the connector forces in order to pull them together, and as soon as I did that, both of them dropped out of the sky. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know, I think something to do with the connectors interfered, because I tried getting back into the black one and making it fly and it wouldn't accelerate. So, I don't know what's going on with that. I need to experiment a bit further and see if in-air docking is possible, because then you could do the inverse of this whole idea and actually have it so that you bring one of these down from space and it launches an atmospheric aircraft that it can then redock with later once it needs pulling back up again. And that, I think, could be really exciting, really interesting. Aside from that, there's nothing particularly magical about these. I just tried to keep them nice and thin, nice min minimal frontal profile so that they were very aero vaguely aerodynamic, not very. And also with the larger craft I wanted to make sure it had a really big wingspan and in doing so kind of curve it around so that it could be tall enough to lift the other craft off the ground so that it is also possible if you want to to land this with the black one attached. You know it's actually lifted fully off the ground and of course it helps with the takeoff as well. So we're at the same sort of distance out, and bringing this one in is of course a lot easier than bringing the other one in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop all of our damping force, uh, not damping force, drop all of our thruster override off, so that now I'm actually in control of the thrust myself, and we can start bursting it in. But this thing glides way better than the other one does, so it holds itself up much better. And of course it's got atmospheric thrusters, so you can actually make a difference to the speed quite dramatically. So again, it's just a case of bringing yourself in. I tend to line myself up in first person like this gives you a better idea of when you're straight to the runway and then worry about the other way around. Now I am traveling quite quickly here. It's one thing I should be wary of, although as you can see if you do a bit of banking you can actually drop that speed quite well. And let's just bring her up, same deal, we're gonna kill our sideways motion and we're going to unlock our wheels as we get near the ground. Still got a bit too much sideways motion. And this one you'll see actually like holds itself up so very well even at these sort of speeds. Really not going very fast. No, too much. Is that about right? Ooh, just about. And what I'm actually trying to do, I'm going to be cheeky here. I'm actually trying to land over the top of that thing ready to dock up as we come in. Let's unlock those wheels. Am I going to miss? Yeah, I'm going to miss. Oh well, we can line her up. Now she's going to do something funny when she hits the ground, a nosedive like that. Now for some reason, this is to do with the wheel locks, when we, you think, okay, yeah, it's because it's very forward heavy. Kind of true, but these wheels will now be locked again. When I press forwards, you can see that that one on the edge is making us turn. And if I lock and unlock it, it'll then behave again. I don't know why that is. Something to do with the impact with the ground makes some of the wheels lock sometimes. But the deal here is, as you guys have probably guessed, we go and line ourselves back up over the top of this thing. Now I can turn the wheel steering on to help with this. These wheels will steer in those little housings as well, but sometimes it's not needed. Dampers to slow us down, and this is why I needed the dampers, you guys will guess. And again, more weird locking. The twisting motion comes to do with the wheel locks. I don't know what that's all about. They just behave a bit weird on the ground. Let's line ourselves up connector-wise. There we go, oh, oh, a bit far forward. Come on. And then the last part of the procedure, we go into the connector on this ship. Where is it? Connector 2. Turn our strength up to something about there. Jump out. She's wobbling again because of that wheel lock. It's, it's annoying, but what we can now do, get in here, disconnect her, strength up, and at some point we will actually get grabbed by the one underneath us. Come on. 
Oh, it's, it's rolled back too far. That wheel lock thing is really odd, really strange behavior at times on the ground. Don't know why it's bouncing, and it's making this bit seem way more clunky than it is sometimes. Might have to switch to some other footage to show this bit, because in reality, you don't even need to line yourself up properly. You can get yourself onto the connector and then... Sp oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go, that'll do it. Uh, now I can get down here, and you'll see they're completely out of alignment. We can fix that really easily, just by getting into this ship, looking up, and swinging until we're in line like that. About right. Connector. Lock. Ooh, bit off, but it's not going to make all the difference. They're now locked together, and because they are, we'd be ready to spin her around and go for another flight. And that is how come this thing never went beyond the concept stage, is because I kept coming back down again in one piece, so I kept just kind of adding a little bit of design to it and taking it off again. I'm pretty damn pleased with that one, folks. I mean, yeah, it's impractical. It has, solved, has no purpose in Space Engineers, really, other than to demonstrate that it can be done. And it's kind of ugly, but I'm pretty pleased. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. I, you know, space them back three times. That's pretty much success in my books. If you did like it, slam that like button, please, guys. Really helps me, the channel out. Also helps get the video out there, get it up the search ranking so people can see some of the cool stuff, get a bit of an idea of space engineers, find the channel, all that stuff. If you didn't like it, you know where the dislike button is. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, folks. I will catch you for the next one. Thank <laughs> you.